What's happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. So we have just drove 14 hours into the middle of Australia to arguably the harshest environment that we have here in this country. This is where I'm going to be staying for the next 24 hours and I've actually been dropped at this massive hill right here. So in a second I'm going to walk up, get my bearings. I've told my mate to pick me up about 10 kilometers away so we're going to have to walk there over the next day or so. There are so many cool animals out here. There's emus, kangaroos. The world's most venomous snake has been found not too far from here. On the drive out here, we saw the second most venomous snake in the world, the Eastern Brown. And I'm gonna be living with these animals over the next couple of days. This place is so dangerous, it's dry, it's gonna be incredibly hard to survive here. It's eight o'clock in the morning and it's already 40 degrees. But yeah, I'm keen for the challenge and I'm keen for the adventure. It's gonna be a really cool one. My first mission is to get to the top of this hill right here and find a place to set up base camp. Forty degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning at the moment even from walking around this area so far you can see that heat is one of the biggest killers out here should make an interesting adventure guarantee that just walking up this place already we've already walked within meters of eastern brown snakes literally so many places little cracks under the rocks and everything for these guys to hide so we definitely have to be careful getting bitten by an eastern brown snake out here is certain death so we've got to be careful but we're nearly at the top of the rocks so let's keep going So I can see that the sun has rose over that way, which means that's east, that's west. There's a nice tree line down there, which I spotted from this mountain up here. I'm pretty sure that's a creek. It's about a kilometer away. So we're gonna start heading there now across the plains. Since this place is so hot and dry, that's where I think these animals, snakes, kangaroos, emus will all be sitting. So let's start heading there now. Massive emu. This is the second biggest land bird that we have in Australia. These guys are literally dinosaurs. He's just shot through these trees right here. And I'm pretty sure there's a clearing on the other side. Let me get my drone out and I'll get some shots of him. Yeah, look at that. Massive emu. He's just run into this big clearing right now. I'll see how close I can get to him. So cool, just following him around. These guys are literally living dinosaurs. They can be really territorial as well. I've heard stories of people getting their guts ripped open by emus because their feet are literally like daggers, but not something that I have to really worry about out here. Oh, he's facing the camera. Oh, that was, looked like he was gonna attack it then. Oh, look, I'm so close to, oh, he's just fully attacked my camera and my drone has disconnected. The screen's fully blank. This large chicken has just attacked my camera. I'm gonna go run through the paddock. It's like 150 meters away to try and get it back. And hopefully it hasn't fully ripped it up or anything. Yes. There we go. I hope that's not broken. Let's bring it back. All the way back there, 
that is the mountain that we first started on. I've just been walking across these really dry flood plains, nearly gone through a whole bottle of water already. So what I'm gonna do is I can see the tree line over there that I'm aiming for. I'm gonna head down there, fill up my water bottle and try to find some animals down by that creek. So after about 45 minutes of walking to get to this creek system that I saw from the top of that big hill, we've actually come here to find out that it's completely dry. We're in a massive drought at the moment. As you can see, these cracks in the dirt down here, no water at all. And I could potentially dig down and find some, but it's gonna expend way too much energy. But the good thing about coming down to this creek is I actually spotted the first animal as soon as I got down here. So if you come over here, it's a little snake that I found up in this tree. Yes. Look at that. Look at him perched up there. So that is a carpet python, but this one is so much different to the ones that we find up on the sunny coast. So I'm pretty sure that this guy is a Murray Darling carpet python. So these animals are actually constrictors. So what they'll do is he'll be hunting around for birds in these trees, small rats, lizards. And what will happen is he'll strike out, coil around him, squeeze all the air out of his prey, and then swallow it whole. Sometimes they can even dislocate their jaw to do so. Yeah, look at the little dude. Just crawling around this tree right here. So the target species wasn't actually this snake. I've always wanted to find a black-headed python out here. So we're still gonna be looking for him, but I'm stoked to find the other species that live out here. He couldn't quite reach to the tree over there. So he's using me as a bit of a stepping stone to get there. I was a bit disappointed to come to this creek and not find any water here, but I think this is just a sign telling me to keep going because there's a lot more cool animals out here that I can find, but I'll definitely need to get a drink soon. That is the other thing that is so hard out here. It's not just the heat, it's not just the deadly animals and the vast and dryness, but these flies are trying to get as much moisture as they can. So there can be like 50 flying around your face at any given time, but still worth it to have experiences like this out here in the outback. It's going up over your head again. Where you going, mate? He's trying to, he sees those branches. I actually here. can't see anything. Yeah. Just run out of water as well, so I'm gonna to need to fill my bottle up, but let's head down there and see if we can find any animals or anything. This guy right here. So we were just walking across the plains. And look, I think he's gonna climb on my hat. All of a sudden, I see this dragon-like little bug flying across the plains. I'm like, what is that? I'm pretty sure it's some sort of stick insect or leaf insect. He's finding a nice little place just sitting on my head right there. So I thought I'd chill with him for a bit. Maybe go for a bit of a walk through the bush with him. Keep heading to where I'm gonna set up camp tonight. But yeah, so cool. We've seen so many awesome animals already. To add on to everything out here, not just the flies, deadly animals and heat, but there's also currently a plague of locusts that are out here. So if I can't catch anything to eat, I might just eat a couple of them for dinner. 
So here's another animal that we found just down in front of us here. Just a little dragon sitting in this tree. There are so many of these guys across these plains. I found a little one earlier, so it's cool to get this one real up close to the camera. I think she's actually gravid. I think she's pregnant and she's sitting in this tree, camouflaging herself because there's so many hawks out, birds of prey. Everything wants a piece of this dragon. So as you can see, she's doing a really good job camouflaging herself. Looks exactly like the tree. And these are things that you miss out here if you were just walking past this tree and didn't actually look for it. So that's what I've been doing the whole time, stopping and starting, searching little areas. We've got a bit more of a walk to go before we make it to camp, but yeah, so cool getting these little guys up close to the camera. A lot different than all the animals I have back on the sunny coast. And you know what? I'm gonna have a little walk and see if I can find another one. I'm sure that there's another one in a tree around here. Literally 20 meters down from that one. You can see just in there, there's another one sitting in the bush, so cool. But I really got to get out of this sun right now, it's so hot already. So let's keep going on our mission, make it to a place where we can not only hopefully catch some dinner, but set up camp as well. You can see this place, it's absolutely filled with water lilies as well. That's an edible plant. Might have to go for a swim to get a couple. There'll be yabbies in here, fish. I'll show you what I got in my backpack. Got a knife to fill it up with fish and cut up anything that I need to. I've got a hammock inside here to set up between a couple trees right down near the riverbank. Got all my filming gear and we're gonna be going for a night walk later tonight. So I've got a torch as well so that we can see all the animals out at night. Maybe go see some more snakes or something. But yeah, it is the hottest part of the day at the moment. I know I can get some water lilies. I know that there's freshwater crabs and crayfish out here that we can eat. I say we get in the billabong and try to collect some food. So I've just been walking around this billabong and what I've noticed is there's heaps of inland freshwater crabs here. Oh, yeah. Got him. There is so many of these little guys. Hold up, flick them on the bank. There we go. That is a little freshwater crab. And that, if we can get a couple of them, is going to be my dinner. And now they're not big at all. They're probably like that big, full grown. So I'm going to use an old fella's technique of just feeling around with my feet, hopefully squishing them into the mud and grabbing them. There's also a heap sitting in the shallows, so I'll give that a go. So I'm sure some of you are wondering, are there crocodiles in here? We're in a billabong in the middle of Australia. So believe it or not, there is one crocodile out in this place and it was caught years ago. It was a freshwater crocodile and they couldn't determine that it wasn't a wild animal from this area, even though someone's obviously bought it from up north and released it down here. So there's one crocodile out here somewhere, but being in here, I'm in no danger whatsoever. I hope. This right here is the water lily. You can eat almost all of it. There we go. So I felt that guy under my foot then. He has a massive nipper on him. Let's bring him just up here. Look at that. That is awesome. They're hiding within all that mud down there. go and we got another one just getting the fire going at the moment then once it dies down to coals we'll have it going all night we'll um, chuck these little crabs in we can eat them with the water lilies over there so much walking today across the harshest environment imaginable and the reason why I think that this is the most dangerous place to do a survival video like this is because this is the place that I'd least want to do one and we've literally done it but I mean here we are, we found ourselves in a pretty good place at the end of the day and we've seen some really cool animals. I'm so keen for the night walk tonight. But yeah, if you like this kind of content, make sure you leave a like, subscribe. We still got a whole big adventure ahead of us, so don't go anywhere just yet. But yeah, I'm just gonna chill out at this billabong till it gets dark. The moment of truth. It's definitely nothing like those mud crabs that we cooked, but if I had to choose not eating or eating that crab, I would choose not eating. So luckily, I can wash it down with some lily stem, which I found in this swamp over here. <laughs> Supposedly tastes like celery. And if I had to choose out of eating this lily stem or nothing, 
It's actually not too bad. <laughs> Lily really stem. I definitely will eat all those crabs. But yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to the traditional owners of this land. I feel very blessed that I can come out here and experience it all, survive like this. And yeah, we're gonna have a pretty cool sleep tonight. I think it's about an hour till the sun goes down. Then we're gonna head out on a night walk and see what else we can find out there. Yes, we got one! Oh, I've been walking out here for about half an hour already, have not seen any snakes, and this is the first black-headed python that I've ever found in the wild. This is the species that we came out to this area to find. I knew they were out here. Now this guy isn't actually too big for a black-headed python. It's probably just over a meter long, but these guys can get way bigger. This could be a little male. The females have been known to grow well up over three meters long, and they're just massive. So what I find fascinating about this snake in particular is just the design of its body and the colorations on this snake. So you can see he's got a jet black head, it's literally like it's been dipped in oil. And the reason why these snakes are colored like that is black is the color that absorbs the most heat. Since these guys are cold blooded and do still have to warm up for the day, they can literally just stick their head out of the hollow and disperse the heat throughout their body. It's about 8 o'clock at the moment and it's already like 30 degrees, so this guy's absolutely loving it out here since they live in such hot climates they have to eat more because they digest their food quicker but this is really amazing to me because this is a snake that I've wanted to find since I was little and this is the first one that we've ever found yeah I'm right here you can sense me coming here not gonna do me any damage these guys have got no fangs oh no venom but as you can see gets a bit defensive but he's just trying to go about his night so yeah, she's just crawled up this tree right here, but we're gonna let the little girl go. Keep walking around and see if we can find any other snakes tonight. This is just proof that they're out, but yeah. That was such a cool experience. So glad that I got to film it in this video. All right, see you later, big girl. Look at this little fella, oh he is angry, coming straight for me. So this right here is a little children's python, look at that, literally trying to take my face off. But yeah, he's so aggressive. Beautiful looking snakes. Now these guys don't get as big as the big carpet pythons that we have back home. They generally grow to about one meter. One and a half meters is big for this species. So these guys, although they look like babies, they're not actually too small. So believe it or not, we have not found one children's python. You can see this one crawling over here. But if you come over here, look, there's a second one. Two children's pythons in one little night walk so far. Where you going, mate? Not a tree, buddy. It's been such a cool day so far. But what I'm gonna do is keep walking around, see if we can find anything else. If not, head back to camp. I'm so stoked with that. I mean, not a bad setup if you ask me. I just fully stoked up the fire. I'm gonna be chilling here for a bit, but it has been a massive day. So I'm gonna get an early night's sleep, wake up tomorrow. I've told my mate to meet me here in the morning. And yeah, we'll go on another adventure. Maybe go for a fish or something. 24 hours in the Outback Survival Challenge. It's been really cool. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video as well. And I'll see all you legends tomorrow.
morning everyone. So it's currently like six o'clock in the morning. You can see the sun's just coming up over the billabong right there. So this is my final day that I'm gonna actually be here out in the outback and then we're heading back home. So I don't know what I've got planned for today. My mate's coming and picking me up in about an hour or so. But yeah, not a bad sleep out here. For everyone watching out there, this is me challenging you to go outside today. Get out into nature if you can and experience it all. This has been such a cool experience so far and I'm definitely going to be going on more road trips to film all this kind of stuff. Let's go. Ever since I camped here, I'd been wanting to come out in the kayak, so I'm glad my mate bought it. We can go for a little early morning kayak and continue the adventure. Alright everyone, and I think that's it for another adventure. We've just made it back to this massive rock where I started the hike. It feels like so long ago when we started filming this video, but we've been here for over 24 hours now, experiencing the land, finding all these animals, catching my own food, and surviving in the harshest environment that we have here in Australia, and I documented it all for you. So thank you so much for coming along for this adventure. If you want to support me to help me keep making videos, you can like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to go check out some of my other videos, I've been posting survival, nature and fishing videos since I was literally 12 years old and I've been trying to do it a lot more regularly lately. But yeah, thank you so much for coming along for this adventure. It was really cool and I'm keen to see you guys next time. Cheers guys.